Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you from TSEC, Season 19, Premier Division. This is Lila against Komodo. Let's have a look at this from round 20. So the opening book given c4, e6, d4, knight, f6, knight c3, d5. We have a queen's gamut declined exchange variation. Bishop g5, bishop e7, e3. It looks like a solid positional game right up leader's street here so c6 here knight f3 rook e8 this is the end of the book given we see white castling bishop g4 and now queen b3 trying to punish the absence of the bishop protecting b7 so this is an idea quite often used in these structures and situations we have queen b6 and the queen actually drops back and there's an invitation for black to double the pawns but will there be g-file potential if black does double the pawns here? Black does do that. It's quite an interesting decision. Some trade-offs there. So structure versus potential for kingside attack. We have g6. And we have what seems to be a solid triangle. So is there going to be trouble against the triangle on this g-file or not? Well, we have the king moving. So... Trouble seems to be brewing. Knight bd1, uh, bd7, rook g1, knight h5, and now, interesting, h4, knight df6. If black had played bishop takes g5 here, it seems white actually does best for the counterintuitive, I would say counterintuitive, h takes g5 rather than uh, use the g file, because here actually it seems as though white's getting a pleasant position, for example, like this. Maybe the h file becomes interesting later the structure seems quite solid here so anyway we have knight d f6 not taking on g5 and we have f4 king h8 and white puts more pressure and intensity on that common square so things targeting g6 and even this pawn comes to undouble here you might think this is big trouble for black on g6 but prove it so queen d7, we have queen f3, a5, rook e1. And yeah, it's difficult. I mean, the rook moves away because it's difficult to prove something here right now. Uh, earlier, by the way, uh, if there had been fg or even here, then fg and, you know, black has that f file to play with. So it's not that convincing to take on g6 here. Or even here, you know, it's not that convincing. So we have instead that move 22, rook e1. And we do have a lot of shuffling from here, I I, I must say. So from move 22, uh, yeah, there's a lot of shuffling. I'm just going to play through it without too much commentary. It seems as though this is uh, trying out different configurations. Okay, there's the pawn move a3 that was a significant move structurally so any pawn structure changes in particular they're much more committal decisions as pawns don't go backwards but shuffling pieces like this and not pawns uh, that's kind of not so committal and let's see it carries on so a3 was the most significant pawn move recently and it carries on like this i just want to take you to ah there's a4 okay so a4 okay the a pawn has decided to stay now on a4 it cannot go backwards to a3 unless we're going to play a new variant of chess maybe alpha zero is cooking up what we should be playing to be more exciting and the pawn can go back to a3 until that time though the pawn on a4 cannot go back to a3 this is pawns cannot go backwards chess classic chess pawns cannot go backwards and we have now bishop d1 okay knight gf6 bishop e2 okay nothing exciting just joking <laughs> bishop d6 Knight e2, rook g f8. Wait for it. 
at move 120 knight c1 and there is a pawn move here now after knight c1 as Nimzovich has said sometimes the ghost of the threat is sometimes more significant in the execution there seems to be a ghost of a threat potentially maybe going to c5 or e5 later if e5 support could be made available if the bishop retreats and the knight goes to e5 so one of these two squares uh, seems interesting black plays b6 so it's not necessarily just to cover up against knight d3 to c5 it's the kind of in preparation if the knight ends up on e5 you might want to play c5 against that so it's a committal pawn move it leaves this pawn looser than it was uh, so this kind of diagonal is broken there so it does loosen b6 the pawn chain slightly loosened if rook g8 had been played I just want to set an example here or show one example then for example here as mentioned don't not going into c5 but actually using the e5 square off to f4 this seems quite appetizing for white and then taking here and taking here is winning for example so black would have to be very very careful in this scenario with a huge knight on e5 it looks as though why it's extending advantage here significantly so that might explain why b6 was needed that kind of knight e5 reinforced plan so we have now the knight going to a2 <laughs> uh, here if knight d3 again then maybe yeah c5 and it gives white something to do if bishop e5 then that can just be taken uh, so but the reinforcement plan maybe it's with some penalty you know black's got some other options like bishop e2 c takes d4 so it, it is handy against knight d3 c5 so white doesn't play knight d3 now white plays knight a2 we have rook g8 knight c3 and it's here this knight is causing all sorts of ghosts of threats i believe and i haven't got massive hardware but I do know on my machine at depth 30 with Stockfish NN, like Stockfish 12, my Stockfish NN did come up with the next move, which kind of, it does break the triangle. You know, there's a triangle here of strength. Triangle structures in chess are quite solid in general. If, you know, one of these pawns moves then G6 is, is looser. Uh, but yeah h6 was played and it does match my stockfish 12 at about depth 30. it's um a compromise isn't it seemingly loosening the whole structure like this was a compromise you know loosening this structure at b6 now this structure on the other side of the board has been loosened at g6 uh, so in trying to explain this i i mean i was searching for an explanation if say rook b8 let's try and leave this structure intact what would be the big deal and i found one or two interesting ideas for example the knight coming here and then to g3 and for example like this uh white's only got a small advantage so that's not very effectual but instead of knight g3 there just going for that c6 pawn in this particular configuration now here uh, with the potential of bishop b7 so if black stands guard of c7 now knight f4 hitting h5 and this becomes kind of dangerous you know dropping c6 that's just one like fictional scenario but there was actually i found an even more spectacular scenario to share with you um so uh that that was one scenario so h6 if that was on rook b8 but what about bishop c7 this is the more spectacular finding the bishop going back and going to d3 and now queen f3 and now knight e2 and here knight g3 and you might think well so what the the thing is here if bishop c7 knight takes knight takes can you see what white plays in this position as an example if I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, white plan win actually. Triangle or no triangle.
Okay. I hope you find find it for 500 points or whatever. <laughs> Queen takes h5. Yeah, it weakens f6 and then bishop f6 and it's awkward. You know, it's just totally winning. Why it's just won a rook, etc. Why it's absolutely winning. Uh, if we go back there and instead of bishop c7 played knight takes g3, then rook takes and this, there's bishop takes f6. So the knight's hanging here. That was check. That's why. But if. Um, uh, instead of bishop takes g3 uh, this this looks like it's still an unpleasant position uh, indeed yeah it, it just looks like a, an unpleasant position so yeah that there are some issues with with knight g3 coming up it seems uh, if bishop takes g3 f takes 97 uh, this situation is dangerous for example like this crashing through on the f file so for whatever reason uh, it was assumed it was some time trouble blunder but i'm not entirely 100 percent sure about this position some of you may have super powerful hardware i might want to check out this position was h6 really needed here this is a mystery of this game actually compromising the triangle or was white actually going to do something you know to inflict damage like bishop e2 to d3 and then knight e2 to g3 later or f4 or something like that or rook c1 yeah as mentioned was white going to do something or not so it's a big mystery so in the event though uh you know this this compromise move was played so h6 and now we've got a different ball game altogether. White actually now gives up the bishop. Knight takes and plays bishop e2. Uh, if this is stronger than f takes, because here black can give up, for example, the queen for two rooks. So bishop e2, h5. Uh, if knight h7, this is slightly different, in fact. F takes and rook takes is winning for white because there's bishop h5, for example. That should be winning for white. So h5 was played, and now rook g5. A lot of pressure there, knight h7. And now, guess what leader plays in this position? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, and it is a fascinating sort of tactic, actually, I find. So, what would you play here with white? 500 points white to play here okay there's a move to sort of try and squish things further an exchange sacrifice if the rook had moved back then knight f6 it's annoying after knight g4 for example f3 rook takes e3 pins against the queen the pawn so it's kind of annoying otherwise so bishop d3 and black takes this there's a lot of pressure now on g6 so here we have h takes and now there's a, an idea of f6 kind of squishing the queen in it's uh, quite a closed position for the rooks so even though white is the exchange down it's very difficult for black if g takes f5 bishop takes this position there's just queen takes h5 winning uh, that's just hopeless. Uh, so rook g f8, and we have f6. So the queen squished <laughs> rather dramatically, visually crushing, you could say. And we have king g2. This is so this thick, isn't it? King g2 after that. Rook e6, rook h1, but it is functional as well, actually, getting on that h file. King g8, and we have queen f3. Rook d8, and now knight e2. The knight is giving the idea it might be interested in targeting for fun h5 or g6. Bishop c7, knight f4. In fact, yes, big frets now like rook takes h5 or knight takes h5. There looks to be a number of frets there. Black gave up the bishop just concretely. If rook e8, e then rook takes h5, and this is going to be winning for white. So the bishop gives itself up. E takes f4, accepting <laughs> a trebled 
pawn structure actually it's quite dramatic with the Queen kind of stuck on h7 uh, we have Rook d8 Queen d1 King h8 and now f5 black dare not take this because the Rook takes h5 so we have Rook e4 if Rook d6 here then Queen c2 this position is extremely unpleasant for black <laughs> black would have to give up the Queen so Rook e4 counter exchange sack that's taken and we have f three nudging the rook, queen c two, now queen g eight is played. If g takes f five, then queen takes c six is pleasant enough for white. This is a nice end game indeed. Black's pieces are pretty miserable. So queen g eight, and then we have f takes g six. This is actually important here. If queen takes, then there's rookie two check and. And remarkably, black has resources like this going to g6 here, and that should be an even position actually. So f takes g6 becomes important, and we have a rook and pawn ending after all that. But it is better for white after rook c1, c5, d takes, b takes, rook takes c5. White is significantly better, and our pawn counts one, two, three, four, five. White is two pawns up and the rook can get behind this pawn if needed and white has two connected pass pawns over there and the rest seems to be like technique here this is just technique win from here after rook b2 check the game ended here if it continued okay just for the record for example white can make progress in a number of ways for example like that so I'll take you to the game end position, Rook B two check. So I was I was originally going to call the video, you know, don't break the triangle, and it's it could have been attributed to a time trouble blunder, but when analysing it with Stockfish twelve, it seems Stockfish twelve also comes up with the triangle breaking H six. So I, you know, it can't really be even advice from this game. It seemed to be almost induced like this weakness over here was induced to weaken a pawn over here and then you know the triangle over there was weakened so maybe it wasn't luck Capablanca did say you know a good player is always lucky Leela's always lucky it seems but is it luck or were there maneuvers that were possible that white was going to intensify the pressure so black did those pawn structure compromises uh, because they saw the imminent dangers or coming up the longer term dangers after the maneuvering capabilities so a very interesting game and shows that there is an extra di dimension actually to g file attacks that sometimes you can maybe close up and just squish the opponent's queen is that the lesson we should get from this game maybe very dynamic dynamic game chess is such a hard game we can try and learn lessons from games or maybe we're just kidding ourselves it really just depends on the position but here it seems a bit squishy for the Queen visually it seemed visually crushing to me I hope you enjoyed it as much as me and the mysteries behind it okay uh, I've got a new course at Udemy Kings Crusher TV slash opening tango I hope you check that out the review rating is approaching 4.8 at the moment now it's going up actually more people are seeing it I'm really pleased about that I did put a lot of effort uh, you know a lot of research into that if you want to learn your weakness provocation skills it's a fantastic course for the philosophies as well I love my philosophical uh, talks you know as well not just technical stuff so I hope you check that out Kings Russia TV slash opening tango the the Leela play chess <laughs> the Leela playlist continues with this game of course so bitly slash Leela chess you can come and challenge me for a game at bitly slash chess world if you just register at chess world I'll be able to invite you for a game later and there's the chat resource at Kings Crusher TV slash discord okay comments questions like share subscribes with the notification bell please feed the neural networks at YouTube the algorithms they need your likes and shares of this video so tell your friends share it on Twitter blah 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 thanks very much okay